Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Chapter 23, Gauss Law, Problem number 28, Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday Rasnik Walker, 10th edition. A charge, uh, let me read out the question. Uh, a charge of uniform linear density, 2 nano uh, coulomb per meter, is distributed along a thin, along a long, thin, non-conducting rod. Uh, the rod is uh, coaxial with a long uh, conducting cylindrical shell. Okay, uh, the rod is coaxial with a long conducting cylindrical shell. Inner radius five centimeter, outer radius ten centimeter. The net charge on the shell is zero. What is the magnitude of the electric field? Fifteen centimeter from the axis of the shell. What is the surface charge density on the inner and outer uh, surface, outer surface of the shell? So we have a system like this. This is a long uh, rod. This is a long rod, positively charged with the linear charge density of lambda two nano coulomb per meter. Then this rod is surrounded by a coaxial cylindrical shell with inner radius a, outer radius b. Uh, a is five centimeter and b is ten centimeter. Now this shell, this uh, uh, shell, coaxial shell with this rod is a neutral. It is not charged. Okay, it is not charged. There may be some induced charge on the inner and outer surfaces, but overall total charge of the shell is zero. Okay, total charge of the shell is zero. Now, uh, in part A, we are asked to find out uh, field, electric field at 15 centimeter from the rod, from the axis. So, 15 centimeter is outside the shell because outer radius of the shell is just 10 centimeter. So, somewhere here outside the shell, we had to find out field. And then in part B and C, we had to find out. <coughs> surface charge density on the inner surface of the shell and outer surface of the shell okay inner and outer obviously that will be induced charge if at all there is any uh, total charge as we know is zero since we have to find out uh, surface charge density so let me highlight a couple of results first number one if we have a line charge not a very good line a line charge Field due to this line charge is lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r. Or you can write that as twice lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r. r is distance from, the, uh, from this line charge. Field, if it is positively charged, then it is radially outward. If it is negatively charged, then it is radially inward. Lambda is the line charge density, linear charge density, which is uh, charge per unit length. Now, so part A, we had find out field at a distance of 15 centimeters. Remember, this is 10 centimeters up to this point. The outer radius of the shell, 15 centimeters is somewhere here. So beyond, outside this uh, shell. Now, uh, if we are asked to find out field somewhere here at a distance of R, then we'll use uh, R equal 15 centimeters later on. Now, this cylindrical shell does not have any net charge, okay? If there is any induced charge on the surface is fine, but total charge is zero. If total charge of the cylindrical shell is zero, that would mean shell as a whole does not contribute anything to the electric field because it is not having any charge, okay? It is not having any charge. Uh, field due to the induced charge on inner surface and outer surfaces will obviously balance out so that total field becomes zero. Total charge becomes zero, total field becomes zero. So field at this point will be only because of this uh, rod, charged rod. Okay, and we already know, know the result, lambda divided by two pi epsilon zero r, or twice lambda divided by four pi epsilon zero r. So we'll use that. So field at that point is equal to twice lambda divided by four pi epsilon zero r. 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, if you remember, is 9 into 10 to the power 9 in SI system. Into twice lambda, lambda is uh, 2 nano coulomb per meter, which is 2 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb per meter. Divided by distance r is 15 centimeters. So 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters. So we are, we are using everything in SI system. Okay, we are using everything in SI system. So what we get will also be in SI system. So you just have to <coughs> work this out. I have already done that. So field comes out to be 240. Remember, we have uh, used everything in SI system. So the field we'll get will be also in SI system, Newton per Coulomb or volt per meter. 
So electric field at this point at a distance of 15 centimeters is 214 Newton per Coulomb. Now part B and part C asks us to find out uh, induced charges on inner surface and the outer surface. Okay, inner surface and the outer surface. And remember that this shell, this cylindrical shell we are considering is conducting. Okay, this is conducting, meaning there are free electrons available. Now let's go uh, and find out charge on the inner surface first. Okay, charge on the inner surface first. So I'm considering a Gaussian cylinder here. So this is a Gaussian cylinder. Note that uh, every part of the curved surface of the Gaussian surface is inside the meat of the metal. Okay, inside the, this is the inner surface, this is the outer surface. So this is the material of the metal. And field is uh, this curved surface of this uh, uh, Gaussian cylinder we are considering is lying inside it. And inside the metal we already know field is always zero. Field is always zero. And if field is zero, field is zero, then from Gauss law, from Gauss law, flux through a closed surface is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero. Since field is zero, so flux will also be zero. So that simply means Q enclosed must be equal to zero. Okay, Q enclosed must be equal to zero. Let's suppose length of this uh, cylindrical shell, this Gaussian cylinder we are considered is L. Then what is charge enclosed? Now one is charge of the rod, this charge of the rod which is positively charged here. Okay, how much of that charge is enclosed? Lambda into L because L is the length of the cylinder. And then there is some induced charge on this inner surface of the cylinder. Let's call that Q inner. Okay, Q inner. Uh, we had find out surface charge density. Okay, so we had find out surface charge density. So Q enclosed is zero. That would mean that would mean charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder from the rod belonging to the rod plus charge on the inner surface of the rod plus Q inner is equal to zero. Okay, is equal to zero. So this implies lambda into L plus Q inner can be written as sigma inner, which is surface charge density into two pi r. Instead of r, we have a. This uh, radius is a two pi a into L, and this is equal to zero. Remember, sigma is charge of a unit area. So in order to get total charge, we multiply it by area. Area of this part of the cylinder, which is enclosed here, uh, inner surface of the cylinder, cylindrical shell. 2 pi r l, instead of r, we have a here. So l and l will cancel out, will be shifted, 0 will eat it up. So this implies sigma inner is equal to lambda to this side. It will become minus lambda divided by 2 pi a. Now we know the value of lambda which is uh, 2 into 10 to the power minus 9. We know the value of A which is 5 centimeters. So we can use that here and find out sigma inner. So sigma inner, sigma inner is equal to, I have already worked that out. Sigma inner comes out to be minus 6.4, minus 6.4 nano coulomb nano coulomb per meter square this is surface charge density so per meter square sigma inner is minus 6.4 nano coulomb per meter square since total charge of the cylindrical shell is zero total charge of the cylinder is zero so charge induced on the inner surface and charge induced on the outer surface must be equal and opposite okay must be equal and opposite that would mean uh, q outer must be equal to minus q inner okay must be equal to minus q inner but we are not asked to find out total charge we are asked to find our surface charge density so i'll write both of them in terms of sigma so this implies sigma outer into 2 pi b remember radius is b for the outer surface okay radius for the outer surface is b radius for the outer surface is b into if we are considering length l so into l is equal to minus uh, sigma inner 
sigma inner 2 pi. Now, radius of the inner surface is A. A into L if we are considering length L. So, uh, 2 pi, 2 pi cancels out L and L cancels out. So, this implies sigma outer is equal to minus sigma inner into A. B will take downstairs divided by B. Now, A already we know is 5 centimeters, B is 10 centimeters. So, this becomes minus 5 divided by 10 into sigma inner, we just found is minus 6.4 nanocoulomb per meter square, minus 6.4 nanocoulomb per meter square. So, this minus minus is plus. So, this comes out to be uh, 3.2. 5 by 10 is 1 by 2, 6.4 divided by 2, 3.2 nanocoulomb per meter square. So, sigma outer is equal to 3.2 nanocoulomb per meter square. Remember that total charge of the cylindrical shell is 0. That guarantees you that total charge on the inner surface and total charge on the outer surface are equal and opposite. That does not guarantee you that surface charge densities are equal and opposite. Total charges are equal and opposite. Okay. Total charges are equal and opposite. Q outer is equal to minus Q inner. Not the sigma. Sigmas are not equal and opposite. This one is uh, 3.2 nanocoulomb per meter square, but this one is minus 6 point because they are having different idea. Okay. They are having different idea. Uh, so this is all we, we were asked to find out. Uh, yes, this is all we have to find out. This will do for this session.